Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys a quick and easy way to upgrade to Windows 10 or upgrade to a newer version of Windows 10 if you're already running the operating system. So I thought I'd put out another video like this. I've done one for the last two consecutive years and I thought I would make another one in this brief tutorial for you guys. And this can work, like I said, for people who are upgrading from Windows 7 or perhaps an earlier version of Windows, or people that are just looking to update their Windows operating system without having to go through a Windows update, which isn't always the most reliable method, or it's at least not the fastest method in my opinion at times. So we're going to jump right into it, and we're going to start by opening up a web browser here. It doesn't matter what web browser you choose to open up, and I might include a link to the Microsoft web page you're going to be downloading this from in the description of the video. But in the event that I don't, I am going to show you guys a quick walkthrough how to access the site. And like I already implied, this is going to be a Microsoft domain here. I would recommend you download it directly from Microsoft. It's probably the most safe and secure way to download it. And you want to navigate over to Google, and into Google you want to type in Windows 10 Download, and you want to search that up. And one of the best matches from the Microsoft domain should say download a Windows 10 disk image. You want to select that download, or that web page I should say, and again it should say Microsoft in the name of the website. And now you should be greeted with a page that appears somewhat like this, and at least at the time of this recording this is how it appears, and it really hasn't changed too much over the last couple of years. It should say Cree Windows 10 Installation Media. You want to left click on this download tool now button. and you're going to be asked if you want to run or save this media creation utility. At the time of this recording it's about 18 megabytes. I'm going to just run the file here and whether you're performing an upgrade for this computer you're currently on or for a different computer nothing has changed up to this point you're still going to want to either run or save the file because this media creation utility like I said it's just a utility and it's going to give us the option to download and install Windows 10 in a couple moments here once it's done. And once it's done, you might be prompted for a user account control window. You want to select yes, and we can minimize or close out of our web browser at this time. You want to accept the end user license agreement by clicking on this accept button. Should say getting a few things ready. And now is where we're going to start diverging depending on what you're attempting to do in this circumstance. If you're trying to update or upgrade this current computer we're on, you're going to select to upgrade this PC now. However, you also do have the option to create installation media, and you can also install Windows 10 through this method as well on this computer, but it's a more indirect method, I should say. So if you're looking to save it as an ISO file and then burn it to a DVD, this second option would be for you. 
and you would also have the additional options to go through and install Windows 10 and the upgrade process is pretty similar for both and I will be showing that in this tutorial as well I want it to be pretty comprehensive so let's say we're not going to be upgrading this current computer which this first option is very straightforward just follow along with the on-screen prompts and let's say I want to create an installation media I'm going to select the second option here and then I'm going to proceed to click on next and now for language it's going to auto fill in data here depending on your current computer you're on even if you select you're going to be installing it for a different computer through the ISO file as you saw so assuming that your specs are going to be a little bit different we're going to uncheck this box next to use the recommended options for this PC and this will give us the flexibility of setting up the language edition and architecture so 32 or 64 bit and would allow us to customize our installation of Windows 10 a little bit so depending on your current computer so mine happens to be a 32-bit version of the operating system I would prefer if you guys if you know what architecture you're using so 32 or 64-bit you select that one from here if you wanted to create an installation media that encompassed both so either maybe you didn't know which one it was or you just wanted to have a media utility that could do it for both circumstances you can always select both but keep in mind that will take more time to download and Windows 10 is probably going to be one of only one of two editions probably listed on this drop down menu and you want to select the correct language as well and then once you've done that you want to select this next button choose which media to use again USB flash drive needs to be at least 8 gigabytes free keep in mind if you're going to be burning this to a flash drive you want to take all of your files and documents off of that flash drive or USB stick because this will overwrite any information that's currently installed on it and it pretty much would go the same for any DVDs that we're going to be burning if we select the ISO file method so it'll say you'll need to burn the ISO file to a DVD later I have made tutorials on how to boot your computer from a USB flash drive, ISO file I've walked through all these methods before so if you're unfamiliar with how to burn an ISO file to a DVD that's a different tutorial let's see we already have to know how to do that so I'm going to select the ISO file and then I'm going to select next and this will begin the process of trying to locate a location to save the ISO file to so let's say I save it to the desktop here and now what I'm not going to show in this tutorial is I'm going to be burning the ISO file once it's downloaded to my desktop and then I'm going to burn it to a DVD and once I've done that I'm going to boot the computer off of the ISO file once it's been downloaded and everything and if you were using USB flash drive method it should do it automatically you don't actually have to burn it to anything so the flash drive method is pretty ideal and everybody has a USB flash drive nowadays that should be bootable and like it said it has to be at least 8 gigabytes free and if you're unsure how big it was you can just open up the star menu go underneath computer by left clicking on it and if your flash drive was plugged into your system it would say how much space was in it next to hard disk drives and you want to look for something that said flash drive, USB stick, something along those lines and it would tell you how much space is currently available and of this total number that's where you want it to be at least 8 gigabytes so like I said this does take a while to run it will download to the desktop where I saved it to and then I'm going to load it onto a DVD I'm going to boot the computer from it and then we're going to conclude this part of this tutorial and then we're going to move on to the actual installation of Windows 10 so stick around and I will be right back hello everyone I'm back so I have successfully burned the Windows 10 ISO file to a DVD and you might be prompted when you're using the media creation utility if you want to open up the DVD burner on your computer and it will walk you through how to do it and it's pretty straightforward that method as well so I'm just going to put that out there and now we can see underneath Windows Setup we want to select the correct language time and currency here as well as the keyboard or input method once you've done that you want to select next once you've ensured that's correct and now you want to select this install now button right here and now this will take some time so just be patient Now, if you have a product key, like let's say you bought a retail version of Windows 10, you can insert the product key here, and you might not even be prompted for this if you're upgrading an eligible Windows computer. However, if you do not want to install with a product key at the moment, you can just select I don't have a product key, and you can continue with the installation. So if you just want to select that, you're more than welcome to. 
and now at this point you want to select the correct operating system so for most people it probably will be Windows 10 Home Edition if you're upgrading from Windows 7 or Windows 8 Home Premium for Windows 7 or Home Edition for Windows 8 or 8.1 However, you can select Windows 10 Professional if you were running Windows 7 Professional or Ultimate Editions beforehand. So once you made your selection, you would just select this next button right here. Again, you're more than likely going to be selecting the Windows 10 Home Edition or the Windows 10 Professional Edition. It will likely be one or the other. Then you want to check mark that you accept the license terms after you've looked through the end user license agreement. And then proceed to left click on this next button. And now we have a couple options here. Like I said, if you wanted to upgrade your computer, select the first option which will install Windows and keep file settings and applications. The file settings and applications are moved to Windows with this option. This option is only available when a supported version of Windows is already running on the computer. And the second option underneath is to just do a basic clean install of the Windows operating system. So it will say the file settings and applications aren't moved to Windows with this option. If you want to make changes to partitions and drives, start the computer using the installation disk. We recommend backing up your files before you continue. Since this computer is a clean slate, I'm going to select custom. However, if you're trying to upgrade your computer, you can select the first option. And now, depending on how many partitions you have set up on your computer, there might be multiple drives listed here. You want to select the one that is more than likely going to be the largest on this list will be your main hard drive. Some people have backup drives or partitions. So I only have one listed here, so it's very easy for me to pin it out. And if there was a file type, it would be NTFS or something along those lines. In my case, it's blank. But you want to make sure you're selecting the correct drive, and there really should only be one or two perhaps listed here. And keep in mind, if it's showing a drive size in megabytes, you're going to have to convert that to gigabytes. So if you have a 512 megabyte backup, it's not as big as a 25 gigabyte drive. So you'd have to consider that 1,024 megabytes is one gigabyte, if that makes sense. So I'm going to select our only drive here again, and then I'm going to select next at the bottom. And this will begin the Windows installation process, so you have to be patient. This will take a couple moments, because it is not only going to be installing Windows, but as well as installing updates through the process. So you just want to be patient, and I will be right back.
Okay everybody, so we can see that we have a new screen here, saying a little sign in here, and you can see that the screen has definitely improved or it's changed since the last time I've been through this video. So we can see we have our mouse functionality here. So if you had the speaker enabled, you could turn it off by clicking on this little speaker icon, it appears it's going to start trying to talk to you maybe. So again, just want to be patient here. And it's going to ask you where your region is, where you're located. Once you've selected your region, you want to select yes. You want to select the right keyboard layout. Scroll through using the scroll right here. Select yes. If you don't want to add a second keyboard layout, just select the skip option. And now you might be prompted if you want to try and connect your Wi-Fi signal. Since I'm in a virtual environment, I believe it automatically is going to connect me, so I'm not going to have to worry about that. But if you have a network adapter, you might have to insert a Wi-Fi password. So just make sure you have that nice and handy around. Because like with any Windows installation or any computer installation, you're going to have to set up some basic uh, functionalities when you're installing the operating system. So there we go, guys. We can change how we want to set up our account. So we want to set up for personal use, we can select the first option, which will give you a personal Microsoft account. And you can also set up for an organization. The first one, we should have an option to set up a local account here as well. So we can set up for personal use. Even if you want to do a local account, you still want to select the first option here. And then select Next. And now instead of creating an account, which you can do if you want to create a local Windows account, you can left click on this offline account option in the bottom left. It's basically the same thing as a local account. And again, they're going to try and really push this Microsoft account. I'm going to select no here. And then at this point, you can name your computer whatever you want. And you can see they're still advertising down here to keep using their online Microsoft account, which again, you don't need to do. I don't want you guys to be concerned about that. So I'm going to name this computer John Smith. Then I'm going to select next. Now at this point you want to enter in a password. So just type in a password here. Then select next. Now you have to confirm the password. Next again. And now you can add a hint for your password. Because I just exposed my password to you guys. So you want to insert a hint here. And select next. And if you wanted to enable Cortana, you can by clicking on yes. You don't need Cortana in order to conduct searches on Windows 10, so I'm going to personally say no. But again, you guys are more than welcome to go through and customize this stuff however you choose to do so. And personally, I'm going to deselect most of these privacy options here to disable location tracking, speech recognition, and a lot of this other stuff here. You can read through this stuff how you want to personalize it, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to turn most of this stuff off. Then I'm going to select accept.
Okay guys, so we can see Windows 10 has been installed on our computer and we should have all the functionality of the Windows 10 operating system now available. Now if you didn't insert a product key, I would recommend that you try and get that taken care of. However, it shouldn't hinder any Windows update functionality and there's only some minor visual effects for not activating your copy of Windows 10. So then at this point I would recommend start saving everything to your computer and you guys should be pretty much good to go. So there we go guys, Windows 10 has been installed on our computer, everything should be here. And as always, thank you guys for watching this tutorial, I hope I was able to help you out. And I look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.